All right, hey guys. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit today about how Microsoft won me back with the Xbox One S. Uh, now, before I uh, get into the video, I just want to go over some, you know, uh, some quick points about how they did it. Uh, the Xbox One doesn't seem like it's all about making money this time around. I get it; they want to make money, but it seems like it's more about the customer. And whereas before, that just kind of seemed like an excuse. Um, doesn't have the fail rate that the 360 had. The controller is great. Um, Xbox Live is no longer required. If you want to watch Netflix, um, you don't need Xbox Live. Uh, cloud storage is included. That's a big one. I'm, I'm going to get into that. Uh, backwards compatibility is just something that keeps getting better. And uh, Game Pass. And I'll probably mention Game Pass in my review. But that is a big, um, a big point with why I chose to go with the Xbox One as opposed to um, PS4. Um, so before I can talk about how Microsoft got me back, uh, I just want to talk about how they lost me with the 360. Um, to me, uh, the last generation, PS3, uh, 360, Wii, uh, Wii U, wherever you want to place that one, um, was awful. There was really no good choice. Um, if, if there was ever a generation that made me want to go PC, that was it. Um, sure, uh, PlayStation 3 had the better controller, uh, you know, uh, games fit on a single Blu-ray, multiplayer was free, but then the Xbox 360, it had more RAM dedicated to games, which generally made them more stable, uh, less likely to crash or freeze, um, and it definitely had Xbox Live, something that, um, PlayStation 3 just didn't have. I mean, it did have some games that were okay to play online, but most of the ones I played, they either lagged or there was all kinds of problems. Um, and then, of course, there are little minor things you can get into, like the Xbox 360 had background downloads. Um, PlayStation 3 kind of had them. They were added later. It was like you could download something very small, and then you could set the rest to download in the background. But it was it felt like an afterthought because it was. Um, so I jumped on board with the 360 because just about everybody I knew had one. Um, I only knew one other guy that had a PlayStation 3, and he, we, we, we played The Last of Us. I mean, that was about the only thing that he was into. So if you wanted to play, like, Halo, um, I played a lot of that. I played a lot of Gears of War. Um, you need it. Left 4 Dead. Oh, can't leave that one out. Almost missed that one. Um, you needed an Xbox 360. Um, I had a lot of fun, but, I mean, I had to go through... Uh, I think I had five Xbox 360s. Three of them broke. My first one red-ringed. I wish I was lying about that. I really do. Uh, my second one red-ringed, but it lasted... I think it was like 11 days. Uh, my third one, the disk drive broke. I had to send that one into Microsoft. My fourth one, the video card started to die. I got uh, like all kinds of like rainbowy diamond colors in certain rooms of Left 4 Dead, like when you were in a kitchen where there was like that tiling on the walls. It all it looked like rainbowy, it looked like Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. So I sold that one. Um, and my fifth one was when the Xbox 360 Slim came out. And by then I was just kind of done. I, I don't know why I bought it. I think I was in the store, I had money, I picked it up, I played two or three games on it. And then it sat in a box until the PS4 came out and GameStop had a pretty sweet deal going where you could trade in, I think I had the 250 gig uh, 360, you could trade it in. You got like 150 or $200 uh, towards a PS4. It was a really good deal, so I was like, a friend of mine uh, talked me into it. So I was like, yep, it's going. But in all that time, I had rechargeable battery packs die, uh, controller analogs began to wander uh, or, you know, drift, like where you, you stop moving and your character would just, they would keep going because like the, the, the center of the of the the analog was so finicky um and i feel like it only took like a year maybe even less of use for them to get to that point and some of my discs cracked i i never had any games get scratched or burned um from having the console vertical but i did have games crack and i think that was from taking them in and out of cases um it wasn't the console <clears throat> it was like the little uh, the locking mechanism in the case that, that snapped the games in and out, I think over time, the corners of that would wear away at the center of the disc, and as soon as there was a little groove in it, 
um, it would just, you know, the disc is heating up in the console, it's cooling down out of the console. Eventually, a crack would start. And on Halo Reach, which is the game that I played the most on my 360, uh, the crack almost went into, like, where the game was on the disc. Because obviously that clear center, there's nothing there. Um, but yeah, the crack went through that, and it was just about into... And luckily I was done with Halo Reach at that point. But yeah, that game was in and out, in and out, in and out of my 360. Uh, it was probably the one I played online the most. Oh yeah, and don't even get me started on there proprietary overpriced hard drives where it's like oh you want a hundred gig hard drive well that'll be like five thousand um, dollars well anyways the straw that broke the camel's back i was playing borderlands 2 on my 360 great game and i'm kind of an old-fashioned hermit type of gamer i know it's weird i just said i play online but um i don't do twitter or facebook or anything like that so uh, I found out about the shift codes, and I was like, I'll try these out, you know, free items, right? Loot. So I went to redeem a shift code within Borderlands 2. And I, my job out fell off when I saw that you had to have Xbox Live in order to redeem a shift code for Borderlands 2. I was like, wow. Wow. Uh, Microsoft was that deli that would charge you a dollar for an extra piece of cheese. Now think about that for a minute. Most of us, you know, we're getting a sandwich. Ah, yeah, throw extra cheese on there. They're like, it's extra. I don't care. It's a buck, right? What's well, a dollar? But think about that for a minute. Can you imagine how good, how much money you could make selling slices of cheese for a dollar? It's like when you pay 99 cents for a phone game. You probably don't think that much of it. That's 99 cents. But if they sell 500,000, you know, purchases, downloads, that's a lot of money. So the, the Xbox 360 to me was just kind of like a nickel and dime uh, console. So I picked up a PS3, got Borderlands 2 for that. I only had about, I only had less than $200 to swing on a replacement, or I, I just went PC. So I picked up Borderlands and uh, PlayStation 3. Didn't sell my Xbox until, like I said, the PlayStation 4 came out, but uh, I swear I was done with Microsoft after the 360. I'm like, excuse me, I'm done. You know, they were money hungry. Uh, they cut corners. The 360 was garbage. Um, it broke. Like, I, I don't even know. I can't think of anything I've ever owned that had a fail rate like that thing did. And uh, I figured they just seemed so clueless to me. And my feelings got reinforced when I saw that the Xbox One was just like... It was basically a cable box that could play games. My earliest memories of that being shown off were of TV, which I'm like, okay, I don't care about that in a video game console. Uh, multitasking, swapping in and out of apps. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like, it's great if it can do it, but I mean, I don't need that. And Connect. And I'm like, where are the games? Like, I don't care about any of this stuff that Microsoft is, like, putting at the forefront of the Xbox One. So, uh, very recently, um, I would say it would be when the Xbox One S came out. I feel like Microsoft was really getting serious about turning the console around. So even somebody like me who'd kind of shut the door on Microsoft, even I couldn't help but notice i mean i'd be in gamestop i hate going there but i do go there occasionally um they would have these sweet deals you know i, I remember the xbox one s was like 300 dollars. came with a game i'm like nah that's okay and then finally i was in there one day and it was 250 dollars for a brand new xbox one s it came with a game i ended up getting minecraft because they had no other bundles and I got a free $60 game on top of that, and the Bioshock collection had just come out. So I'm like, I just couldn't fight it anymore. I was like, you know what? I'll get one, okay? I'm not, I don't expect it to replace my PS4, but I'll, whatever. So I got it, and I mean, I was just blown away. Like, things like the free cloud storage, that was probably one of the more important things 
uh, to me, why, why I jumped ship from PS4 to Xbox One. Uh, Play Anywhere is kind of cool, even though I can't really use it. Um, and a ever-growing list of backwards compatible games, um, which is handy if you already own them. You know, if you downloaded stuff on 360 and it becomes backwards compatible on Xbox One, you can just play that game again. You can just download it and play it again. And, of course, Game Pass, but I'll talk about that um, later. So now I feel like rather than continually trying to, like, get me to spend money, as they did with the 360, I feel like Microsoft is just trying to increase the value that I already have in the Xbox One S. It's like I'm not even spending money and they're just making the console better um, every time it gets updated. Um, so since picking it up, I've been surprised with Microsoft's willingness to give a little. Um, as I said before, cloud storage was probably the tipping point. Um, I wish PS4 offered it, uh, but it's behind a paywall. Um, might not seem all that important to some people, but as somebody, I, I've primarily gone from a multiplayer gamer to a single player gamer. I still play online, but I mostly play single-player games. So cloud storage matters to me. Like, I don't want to pay for Xbox Live. I wouldn't. Just to get cloud storage. So the fact that that's included, um, it, it, it makes a big difference. I would rather play on Xbox One than, than PS4. It just seems like a very generous thing to me. But it's also paramount to their Play Anywhere service, um, which is uh, if you buy a digital game, certain ones, like Gears of War 4, you would get it for Windows 10 and... Xbox One, both versions would be included for the same, you know, $60, $50, $40, dollars, whatever it's, but it's digital only, so you can't buy a $50 copy, even if it is brand new, um, and get the Windows 10 version, um, which I kind of use that, I've tried it out with um, Fallout Shelter, uh, I don't know if Minecraft is one of the Play Anywhere ones, but it's okay. I mean, so yeah, if, if if you needed Xbox Live Gold for that, it'd be kind of stupid because you'd not only have to buy the game, then you'd have to maintain your your subscription just to play, just to have your save files like synced up. That'd be dumb. But um, anyways, so like I've been playing games. I'll just kind of detour here for a second. I've been playing games for over two decades. Um, I prefer to own my games. So play anywhere isn't. It is and it isn't appealing to me because uh, it's digital only. Um, and games, to give you an example, um, I opted out of I Am Setsuna when that came out a while back because it was digital only. I'm like, not only is this a $40 game, but it's digital only. I, w I was interested in it, but now I'm just going to pass because if I'm going to buy a digital game, it's got to be dirt cheap, like probably under $10. I just I don't go digital. I need to be able to hold it in my hand. Or it just feels kind of weird for me to pay so much money, you know, for something that I can't see and hold. Um, and plus, as an old schooler, I find that there just aren't that many heavy hitters nowadays that are worth making that physical purchase for. Um, I find that games is just in and out. You know, you get it, you beat it, you never play it again. Um, and not to mention, I, don't, I have 24 hours of free time, you know, like when I did when I was a kid, um, I, I could play, I, I used to get up, play games for about 48 hours, go back to sleep. It was ridiculous. Now I'm, now I like two or three hours. I'm like, I got, I need a break. I got to do something else. So I'm usually, um, under pressure to play new games instead of ones I've beaten already. Um, but it is cool to play Fallout Shelter on my Xbox one. And then I can, you know, pull out my laptop at work and, um, my save files are just synced right up, you know, provided I have internet and everything. Um, so even though I'm not somebody who's really going to utilize much of play anywhere, because like I said, I've only got maybe one or two games, it's still pretty cool. Um, but the one thing I will say that surprised me when I got the Xbox One is backwards compatibility. Um, I didn't even really think about it when I picked it up. I knew that some games were going to be, but I thought it was just going to be the Xbox 360 all over again, where backwards compatibility was kind of, eh, you know, it's there, but who's really going to use it? I figured just keep your Xbox 360 if you wanted to play Xbox 360 games. Um, and I think Microsoft has really, you know, hit the ball out of the park 
on on this one. They're almost like right up there with. In fact, it's almost better than better job than Nintendo does. Like, I mean, I know Nintendo is really good about typically incorporating their last generation console into the next, but it just feels like Microsoft kind of took it a little bit further. Um, like, for instance, you can still play Xbox 360 games online. Uh, I, I feel like there's really nothing that's limited by it. And it works so well. Um, I haven't tried out the entire library, but um, I certainly did get to play um, like Gears of War 3, for instance. I just beat that. That was something I couldn't believe how old that game was. I think it's already six years. It's like, man, where have I been? Yeah, I got to beat that on there. I think it froze once. Um, so I was very thrilled. It felt like I was playing it on a 360. But the coolest aspect of backwards compatibility is that Microsoft is working to add games to this catalog. And if you own some of them already and one of those games gets added, Microsoft didn't make any money. Like, think about that. You already own the game and they just made it playable on Xbox One. I mean, and, th and then you look at the competition uh, in contrast to Sony, where you can't play any PlayStation 3 games on PS4. I cannot pop in a single one of my games and play it. I have to subscribe to like PlayStation Now. I don't know if they do PS3 on there, but, or, you know, they have like old PS2 games. I think Star Ocean Till the End of Time just came out on PS4 and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then I saw they wanted $20 for it and I'm like, no, that's, that's okay. I'll just get it for my PS2 that I already have. Because again, I don't like digital. So I feel like Microsoft is showing its customers that money is not the end goal here. Now, I always roll my eyes when people say they're a business, they want to make money. And it's like, it's like telling somebody that the sky is blue or that the sun comes up. It's like, do you honestly think that I don't know that? But what people don't understand is that Microsoft, they want to make as much money as they can, as often as they can like any business. But I feel like the message is like somewhere in the back seat. You know, it's like, yeah, they want to make money, but they're trying to make it seem like it's all about the customer and they're doing a very good job. And I think that incentivizes people to spend more. And I think Game Pass proves that. Like I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to review it right now, but I'm going to talk about Game Pass real quick. Um, it's not free. But I mean, it's it's very generously priced. It's like Netflix when it first went instant. Netflix was like, what, eight or nine dollars when it first started doing instant uh, streaming. I mean, that was like it was practically free. So it felt like a no brainer. You're like, OK, I'll, I'll sign me up. So I kind of feel like Game Pass is like that. It's a steal the same way that Netflix was. Um, it's like Gamefly, except it's cheaper, it's faster, and what's currently offered is always available. You don't have to worry about a game. Sorry, too many people have downloaded this. We're all out. Who's the guy that downloaded all the copies of Halo? No, they, they cannot run out. You can download as many games as you want. So that is something, especially when you look in contrast to, uh, what is it, PlayStation's... Um, Maybe this PlayStation now. Their their game streaming service where it's I honestly think it's crazy expensive. And I'm not sure how it's like twenty dollars a month or something like that. Microsoft's is only ten. Uh, Microsoft's is download. Uh, Sony's is streaming. So I feel like Microsoft could have just been like, eh, heck, you know, the competition's at twenty. Let's set ours at twenty. Like we're selling two different things, so people they can't subscribe to Sony's. And necessarily get the bargains that we're offering. But instead they chopped it in half. And I feel like that is much more appropriate. Considering that a lot of the games are going to be older ones. There are some new games on there. Newer games. Uh, so yeah I mean that about sums it up. Um, everything that I've thought of anyways. If you've had a similar um, experience. Feel, please feel free to share it. Um. Did I miss anything? Was there something that, you know, maybe you're like, dude, how can you be supporting Xbox One when 
they're doing this. I mean, the Scorpio is coming out. Like you just bought an Xbox One S. Maybe the Scorpio is going to make it, you know, junk <laughs> within a year. But um, at any rate, um, maybe was it the opposite for you? Did Sony, you know, kind of lose you last generation? Maybe they got you back. Or maybe you made that jump that I've been wanting to make for years, which is just go PC. Um, I do have a laptop, a much better laptop now than I had uh, like a year ago. So I do buy more PC games now, but I mean, let's face it, it still can't play. Like I still can't play Fallout 4. You know, it's not that kind of laptop. I can't play. I mean, it would look like absolute garbage if I tried to run it on here. Oh, anyways, feel free to share your experiences. And uh, until next time, I'll uh, see you in the next video.